Uh, moving on. <laughs> what are you drinking? He's drinking water. <sighs> I think for the next one, we're gonna pour a little smaller. <laughs> Poor Kofla. She's like, what am I doing in this group? When you think of Czech Republic, I bet you're thinking of beer. You might even be thinking of wine. Moravian wine is gaining a lot of popularity, and I even have a video about it here. But in this video, we're gonna talk about some other drinks that you definitely shouldn't miss when you come to visit this country. We'll start off in early September, where you might see people walking around with big plastic bottles of a fizzy, clouded liquid and getting progressively drunker throughout the day. This is called burchak, and you will find it at farmers markets and stands all around the country in September and October. Burchak is young wine, and it's in the stage between when the grapes are smushed and when it becomes a full-fledged wine. I don't know the exact process. Part of me thinks it's just because the Czechs can't wait for the <laughs> full process of the wine. They're like, ah, let's just drink it now. But in this bottle, this burchak is still fermenting, and so it's a very gassy, and when they sell it to you, they don't tighten the lid because if you did, the bottle would literally explode. So just imagine what that does in your belly. Also, it tastes like a, gosh, like a sweet wine cooler. So even like, it tastes like carbonated juice. And for that reason, it's definitely the most dangerous drink on this list because you'll be sitting at a park and before you know it, you've drunk like an entire bottle. Now, Burchak is best drunk at a vino brani, um, like a, a wine celebration or outside in the park. But this year, they were forbidding drinking open cups of alcohol on the streets and so we had to pour it into wine glasses at home which just seemed tragically wrong still delicious though as you get deeper into winter you will find stands with svarjak which is hot wine now Countries all over Europe drink Svarjak, let's see, it's Glühwein, Glühwein in Germany, which sounds like gross, why would you drink something called Glühwein? Vin chaud, vin chaud in France, I think. Uh, Italy, I don't know what it's called, but it's Svarjak in, in Czechia. So it's usually some sort of spiced wine. Unfortunately, if you get it at one of the sort of Christmas stands, it's literally gonna be like, red wine like think like gallo wine and sugar and in a hot little in a hot little cup there is a really nice stand we'll see if it comes back in namiesti republiki and they have like they've got like orange and cloves and the real spices that you put into svarjak um and it is a delight on a cold winter night and when I was working at a school here, they even had a pot of Svarshak for the students and teachers to like drink all day long. It's just, you know, it's Svarshak season. Becharovka, I think, was the first alcohol I ever tried in this country, and it is from the Karlovy Vary region. Do you know that this recipe came from England, from a doctor in England? What kind of doctor? <laughs> And this English doctor left his handwritten recipe with this Czech, like a guy who kind of like makes medicinal spirits, and his name was uh, Bechar. I think then, like, they thought that like spirits and stuff would would cure stomach aches, and like you could turn lead into gold. So Bechar fussed with the recipe for two years and then started marketing it as a spirit that would cure stomach aches. Gentlemen first. I'm gonna give you just like a skosh. Yeah, that's good. There's 20 secret ingredients. The ones written right now. No, they're here. not. They're not written. <laughs> okay, do you know Thravi? Thravi. I haven't had this in a while. This is better than I remember. To this day, nobody knows what's in this secret recipe. Okay, so I know that there's orange in there. Anise. Cinnamon. I'm gonna go with. Cilantro. No, cilantro. Cloves. I'm gonna say rosemary because it never hurts to put rosemary in anything. Do you think it's in juniper? Like a yes, juniper? like a, like a, is it a gin that has juniper? I think so, or whatever the the Dutch drink. Mm-hmm. I definitely taste some eye of newt. 
<laughs> the most classic cocktail made from Bekharovka is called a beton, so Bekharovka and tonic. And this was introduced in the World Expo in Montreal in 1967. But here's the thing, I don't see Czechs like ordering Bekharovka. The only time I've ever gotten Bekharovka is when I was with a bunch of tourists who wanted to try it. If you're Czech, do you drink Bekharovka? It's a little bit too sweet as like a after dinner drink or something. I like it. I yeah, like it. no, it's good. Before we get to my next drink, have you watched any of my other videos? If so, have you subscribed yet? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button and you'll get notified every time I make a new video. Slivovitsa is a plum brandy and it's made from distilling plums and this is really popular in Central and Eastern Europe and it's usually like domatsi, it's usually like homemade Slivovitsa. It's produced in Slovakia and also in the south and eastern areas of Moravia. You need 10 to 13 kilograms of plums to get one drinkable bottle of Slivovitsa. A warmed up shot of Slivovitsa is said to cure a stomach upset. There are other types of Slivovitsa. I really like Hruškovice, which is made from pears, and Marunkovice, made from apricots. Okay, so for this one, we're doing Hruškovice. So are we sipping this? What are we doing? We'll see. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's actually not bad. I like that. There's something about like that aftertaste of pear that makes it kind of like smooth. You almost expect like the grit of the pear. I was expecting a, a lot harsher. Mm -hmm. So is definitely an acquired taste. When I first tried it, I thought I would be able to blow fire. So I thought it would be fun to go to an American Slovak wedding in Modra and order a round for the American bride and her bridesmaids. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, choose a mock. I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> Tuzamak is a distilled beverage, very similar to rum, although instead of sugar cane, it uses beets for the sugar. Do you like rum? Um, no. We have no basis to- I'm not a rum drinker. Slander Boschkoff no. yet. No, no, no. And like, what do you have rum in? A nightmare, a blackout. It originates from the Austro-Hungarian Empire and it was called domestic rum or tea rum. But ever since 2003, the overlords of the European Union have forbid the Czechs from calling this rum because it gets its sugar from beets and potatoes instead of sugar cane. Vanilla aroma. Mm, never drink something that says aroma. Coloring, sweet Jesus. Okay. Also, Bo Bojkov, <laughs> if you want to sponsor this channel, I think we're going to love this. <laughs> okay. This is not bad. This, it's, it, tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Nilla wafers. Yeah, well, that's the vanilla syrup. I was thinking eggnog. Ah. We can make eggnog. Nazdravi. Nazdravi. Oh. Okay. That's not bad. It's pretty good. I was thinking it was gonna be sweeter. I was thinking it was gonna be syrupy, but it was like all of the smell of sweetness wasn't there. Yeah. All of the sweetness wasn't there. Okay. It's not bad. Boschkov. Boschkov. <laughs> all this time. <laughs> you know how in the, in the Czech shops you can buy like little tiny shots with like a peel off top? Have you ever seen those? No. You've never seen those? 
Like in some supermarkets or it some very like Japanese. It does, but like in some supermarkets, it's almost like getting um a jello shot. Yeah. But it's like to go. It's kinda like for the people who like need to drink on the street. Yeah. They're like and, and basically can only afford a shot. They're just like, I'll take one of those. Yeah. Well sometimes you have a bad day at the STK guy. <laughs> and you're just Different like Different video. Different video. <laughs> we need new breaks. <laughs> Now for the for the family friendly portion of the event, we have reached the kofala taste test. Kofala is a caramel colored soda made in Olomouc, Czech Republic. So in communist times, Coca-Cola, the ubiquitous symbol of Western imperialism, was really hard to come by in Czechoslovakia. You could only buy it at state-run shops and it was quite expensive. So the state commissioned a group of scientists to come up with an alternative to quench the thirst of the masses. So kofala syrup was invented in the 1950s by Zdenek Blažák. People get angry when I say it's the Czechoslovak answer to Coca-Cola because they tell me it's very different to Coca-Cola. It's, it's got 30% less sugar and it's got 56% more caffeine. Oh wow. And so like, what... like they needed to stimulate the workforce. Ya ja plus Kofla equals VL, which is... Velka Laska, big love. Okay. Big love. We'll see okay. We got big love for this. Let's see what all the fuss is about. Okay. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, it is nice. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I feel like a kid again. Okay, let's do try we, it. Do you mean Nazdravi? Do you mean Nazdravi for know. Kofla? Why not? It's your health. Wow. There's like a tart. It's like, like it's got like some sort of acid in it. Yeah. I, I thought it, at first, I, when I first had it, I thought it was like a lime. Yes. But I think it's more of a green apple. Oh my God. That's true. I kind of wish I'd tried this and it and I hadn't seen the color. When it's this color, I expect like the Coca-Cola, the like the tons of sugar. I really like it. Yeah. Now let's mix it with wow. some Bojka. No, that's <laughs> so wrong! Don't do it! Do you do that? Do you mix Kofla? There are no children watching this, right? Boda. Syrup Kofu. See, it's, it's Syrup Kofu, trademark, whatever that is. Avoshni Syrup Sukru, so fruit syrup, sugar, glucose. Palani Tsukru. Tsukru. Palani Tsukru. Does that mean like burnt sugar? Is that caramel? Is that the word for caramel? Oh, maybe. <gasps> when you come to, when you come to the Czech Republic, I don't know if you, it, I'm talking to Americans here. I don't know if you bring your kids. This is like a fun adult trip. You probably don't bring your kids. If you do, definitely get this and have them try it. If you don't, you should try it. You probably are just like only drinking beer while you're here, but you should try this. This is something completely different than what we have in the States. So when you visit Czechia, there's a lot more to drink besides the typical Czech lager and Moravian wine. I hope you try one of these local specialties and let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Tak, uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj.